that's the greatest gift that we can give to those that are watching out there. Don't forget, God expects us to share the love.
And again, I'm not here trying to change anybody's mind. Because I believe that everybody knows where they're at. They have to change their mindset. And the way that I found it to be is that when I look into his holiness and his word, and I continue to apply the word in my life and continue to use the word, not just speak it, but apply it every day in my life, it gives me strength to overcome all obstacles and all the things that we go through in life when we're young and as we continue to grow. And we know that we get one chance at this. Saturday, we were in a funeral. And we went there to encourage a sister. And she had lost her husband 44 years of marriage. And the love that was there, all the people right now, they were there and how they shared their relationships and the trips that they went together, right? They went to a lot of trips on the boats. Yachts, whatever they call them, right? Uh, the, the cruise, cruises, amen. And so many years, family members and friends that God put in your life, and, and then they're gone. And reality hits because you, you know you're at a place right now because he's stretched out in front of the church and it's talking, and that's it. Amen. But a new beginning starts. But the relationship of love was just flowing in the air. And I just sat back and looked around and I said, wow. You can see. Because God said, when you, when you have that intimate relationship with God, God will let you see things that you never thought you would see. That's why the Bible says he showed you secret things. Amen? Hidden from the natural realm. But it becomes a spiritual realm. Because we're all spirits. Amen? remember that his love surrounds us and when all things go wrong around you remember that that God is there amen and his love that's why the Bible says don't worry about anything for I'm with you my righteous right hand is holding your hands to the right
Bless everybody. Amen. And again, what's my message today? Amen. Because, amen. Excuse my mic. It goes on and on, but I got to use it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, that I could come on the air again. For those that are here, those that have been watching us right now, watch this video later. Father, I pray that every word that I've spoken that you've given me to speak, Lord, that would touch them, Father, Lord, and stir their spirit and tune their ears, Father, for I know that your word does not go void, it accomplishes what it's set out to do, Father, and I'm thanking you today in advance, my God, that you're going to see my brothers and sisters through all their situations, and I bind the enemy right now amen. in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. So my message today is simply what? Let's say it together. Christian unity. Christian unity. Amen. And that's what we need. And that's I'm talking to you 
my sister and my brother out there. And again, I come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to speak the truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. And everybody say it together. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I was talking yesterday. We did a video on Saturday. Amen. I heard it too. Amen. That's all. I was listening to a video. Not listening to a video. We were doing a video. <laughs> Let me say that. And God had given me a word because I was praying this week. And I said, Lord, with all the things that are going around us today. And some of us have been through some disappointments. Is that the truth? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Things sometimes don't work out the way we planned. It should work out. Amen. But see, that's when our faith has to kick in. Believing for those things yet not seen but continue to trust God. Amen? Yeah. So I was talking about how does it, what does people say about us as Christians? Amen? We're to be Christ-like, right? That's what the Bible talks about, being a Christian. And we know that the night before Jesus was crucified, he prayed for who? For his people. And in John chapter 17 is one of the things that he prayed for us, that his people would be as one. Amen? To be as one. And what do we find today the most problem in the world today? Being one. Everybody is about me, myself, and I. Instead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's me, myself, and I. Now, when you become one, what happens? You care for that person. Amen? But then you become one because you have the same mindset, the same heart of God. What did God say? That none should perish. That he loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son. We keep, we know these scriptures, we've heard these scriptures, we read it, but yet sometimes we take it for granted. Amen. And I said, I'm always going to speak the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And I want to go to the Bible. And I want to read today a lot. So I'm going to be sharing in John chapter 17, verse 20 to 23. And I'm going to start today with the Amplified Bible. It says, I do not pray, this is Jesus, I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will even, listen to this, even what? Believe and trust in me to their what? To their message. Think about that. What is your message? What's coming out of your life? Even as I was sharing, we're sitting there, we see this brother laid out, right? He came to the end of his journey. But what message did he leave in his life? What was his legacy? You see what I mean? He was a man of God. And this is why I'm saying that when we, when we walk this earth, God gives us an opportunity, number one, to have what? To have an intimate relationship with him, right? And once we accept him as Lord and Savior, he gives us gifts, and he gives us a love that will never end. But that it increases. Amen. But that same love, what does he ask us to do? To share that love with others. Amen. 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 To share. He had compassion on you. We're to share that compassion with others. And we know that again, and I'm always going to continue to repeat it and remind myself, because this is what helps me to remember that Jesus, even though he was going to be crucified at the Lord, the Lord's Supper, he, he got down on his knees and washed the feet of the disciples. And he made it very plain as to say, again, as I do to you, do unto others. Simple, right? We make it complicated, but it's so simple. But again, let me talk this again. The night before Jesus was crucified, he prayed. And he prayed for his people in John chapter 17. It's one of the things that he prayed for. And as I was reading, he, swore, he says what? Not for their sake, but I make this request. But also for all those who will even, listen to this, even believe and trust in me through their what? Through their message. Because if you trust someone and you have a relationship with someone and, you know, that love continues to flow in you, that's what's going to come out of you. That's your legacy. Amen? Yeah. But he says it. I like the way the Amplified says it. That what, what, through their message. What's your message? What's my message? Amen? And then uh, verse 21 says that they all be what? One. Listen to this. Be one.
love just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be what? One in us. Amen. That the world, listen, that the world may believe, and I like the way they power phrase this, without any what? Doubt. That you sent me. In other words, their full, their what? Their future in glory. Don't you know you have a future? Amen. We think that because it stretched that brother out in that box. Yeah, people talk. There was a lot of love in the air. We had even the from his college, the guys men surround his coffin, and they talked about him. They read the Psalms and and what what his what his legacy was of who he was. Amen. And that's important. So he says, what? Well, that they may be as one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also be in us, that the world, listen, that the world will, may believe without any doubt that you sent me. Verse 22. I have given to them, listen to this, I have given to them what? The glory of and the honor which you have given me, amen, that they be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect and completed, right, into one so that the world may know. Amen. amen. And verse, again, 23 at the end says, Again, it proud phrases this without any doubt. Amen. That you sent me. That you have loved them just as you have loved me. Amen. Just as you have loved me. Now, again, let's focus on that. It says what? In that in verse 23, I in them, you in me, and that they may be well, perfect and completed into one so that the world may know. Again, why I keep saying that? Because the things that we do, it affects those around us. You see? This is what the word relationship is all about. Relationships. You meet someone, right? They become part of your life. This is why I'm always saying everyone that I meet, is a, it, you know, God has given me, that's my ministry, to minister to that person. Amen? Yeah. In our jobs, wherever we at, that's where we minister to people. But what's the legacy that we're leaving? Are we really walking in the love of God? Are we really just talking the talk, or are we really walking in the love of God? Amen. You see, I was talking about church. Church is so important. This place should be filled. Wednesday nights, we come here, we read the word of God. We, we we keep our covenant, but why don't we come just not to Wednesday, we come to intercede, right, Natasha? We come to pray for all those people that we've met. We call them even by our names, amen, and we pray for them, and we ask God to bless them wherever they're at, amen. But most of all that we ask them is, Father, let them have the, the, the what's the word I can use, Father? Let them have the same heart that you want us all to have, to be one in you, you and us, and me and, and us in you. Amen. As the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what I was saying. You know, I thank God that my children and everyone in my family, well, not everyone. Let me rephrase that. Amen. Some in my family keep their covenant with the Lord and they never forsake the assembling of themselves and keeping those basic principles. Amen. You see, the enemy or the devil or snaggletooth, whatever you want to call him, as I do, amen, wants to keep you away from the truth. And we know the Bible says simply, right, the truth sets us free. Why I keep repeating these things? Because these are the most important things. You see, what's your legacy? The person that you are, the things that you do, the things that you believe in, your faith, amen, should be dictated. See, faith is the most important thing. Because if you don't have faith, then what you do, you got. Amen. Faith and all that goes together with God. God has said, I'm faith. He's faithful, right? We can call on him, right? We know that 
we have the word of God that gives us what? Strength to overcome every obstacle in life. Amen? Amen. But I want to say this. Again. That means that the people that you're with should be your priority. And the house of God should be the number one priority. God said, put me first. Why did God say that? You know why God said that? Because he wants to know where your heart's at. Where a person's heart's at, that's where their treasure's at. Now, if he sent his son to die on the cross for us and did all this and forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, right? So what do you want us to do? He wants, he wants us to do the same to each other, right? But also to forgive and not to hold grudges, but to love people and to walk in the truth. And we know today, uh, I'm not going to go there, but I was going to talk about churches, but I'm not going to go there. Amen? Amen? But let me say this. I'm just going to read what the Bible says. And it talks about what? Meaning that, what is that verse we would just read, John chapter 17, talking about meaning that each member of a group or a church or what? Brother and sisters will fight the fight as a group or a church for any uh, and for any other th uh, person, amen. In uh, in other words, they will stand together. I'm going to say this again. They will stand together in a common what? Fight. Amen. What the Bible said: We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities, rulers of darkness. Amen. Just like we believe in God, just like we know that we believe. In the spirit and God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and the truth. There's also spirits that are out there that are evil. Go ahead. Paul and Miriam. Paul and Miriam and Marilyn. Oh, that's that rhymes. Paul and Miriam and Marilyn. In New York, Farak way here in Port St. Lucie and who else? Paula, who? Miriam and Marilyn. Oh, Miriam in New York. Amen. God bless you. And Ocala also. Amen. But again, meaning that each member of a group or church, listen to me carefully, or brother and sisters will fight together. Don't you know there's strength in unity, right? That's why I say Christian unity should be, especially the house of God. We've got, we've got to be unified. That's what God expects from us. That's why he said what? The Trinity is what? The Father, right? The Son and the Holy Spirit, all three entities, right? Are coming together, right? That's how I expect us to do. Why did he say when two or three are gathered and ask anything in my name, it will be done? Amen? Amen? So everything falls into three. I've said that before and I remind people as I remind myself. And again, I don't come to chain anybody down. I come to remind you as I remind myself that what we do and how we talk to each other. The Bible says, you know what? Let's be truthful. That's the word, truthful. Let us be faithful. Because when you have faithful comes truthful. When you have faithfulness comes love, right? When you have faithfulness comes uh, uh, agreement. When you have faithfulness comes joy. When you have faithfulness comes peace. Because God is faithful. Has he been faithful to you? I read by he's been faithful to me. Amen. Amen. So, in other words, that we will stand together in the common fight. We're fighting against things that are out there that are trying to hinder us from moving forward. Is that the truth? Yes. I recognize that this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to get the Ephesian church to adopt into their relationships. Amen. Simply saying that start, uh, simply starting by what? I believe that the Lord has expects us as a church family to walk together, what? In unity for his glory. When I finished that verse, back in John chapter 17, verse 23, it says what? That it says, to be perfect and complete into one so that the world may know. Amen. So that the world may know. And faithfulness is a big part of that. Amen? Being faithful to one another, but as we're faithful to God, we're to be faithful to one another. Amen? Amen. As we're faithful, like
like our moms and dads that we have, they're faithful to us. No matter what we've done, they're always going to love us, right? They're always going to put up with our nonsense. And so that's, just, that's what God is talking about. Faithfulness. Amen. Again, simply saying, I believe that the Lord expects us, and I say this to you, my sisters and brothers out there, that the church should walk together in unity for his glory. For the word of God tells us that unity is not just a possibility. It is what? A divine requirement. Listen to what I'm saying. A requirement if we are to be everything that God wants us to be as a church. Amen. You see, we define that word church. We think of it just a building. No, it's not. The church is you and I. Amen. We're the church. Now, the foundation upon which is built in unity, amen, the Lord provides us with what? With his word. With his word. That's why it boggles my mind sometimes. I say, why people don't want to learn the word of God? They're listening to others, but you got to show yourself approved. Amen. It's like you got girls went to college. You have to study. You have to go through whatever you got to go through to get that, that degree. You see? God says, I'm here. I want to give you that degree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of really knowing and setting you free from bondage. Amen. Because, see, we only get one chance at this. I keep reminding people, as I remind myself, I'm going to be one day stretched out in that box. And I know that I, hope, I believe, uh, you know, I hope anyway. That, that that world's gonna be surrounded with love, with people that love me, that I was able to touch them, and what they said, that they see the glory of God in my life that manifested to each one and touched them, that they their conversations about me, and I remember what he did. I remember how he loved God, how he always was talking about love. Oh, I remember that he not only talked it, he lived it. Because he showed love, he showed compassion, and he and he and he he spoke about the goodness of God. Amen. And he impacted my life. See, that's what those brothers were saying about him, and they said, "Your your journey has done good and faithful servant." Because we all gonna face that one day. What is good? What are you leaving behind? Amen. Hallelujah. Again, the word of God tells us unity is not just a possibility. It is a divine requirement if we are to be everything that God wants us to be as a church. And now the foundation upon building unity that the Lord provides us again with what? With the word. Amen. One body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptismal, one God and Father. Amen. Did you notice that everything is about who? About him. When our lives, our, our desires, or our will are intended, stop being, uh, are intended to stop being about him, and what happens? We start focusing on who? On us. Is that the truth? You know where you're headed? To trouble in your life. Praise the name. Amen. You're headed for trouble. Amen. In your life. And that's the truth. Stop being, when that stops being about him, you start focusing on us, and we are headed for trouble, as I was saying. As believers, we may come from different places, Amen. As I've come from New York City. Amen. And my life maybe is not as your life. Maybe your experiences in life are not what I experience. You know? Uh, I know what it is not to have. I know what it is to sleep in a car. I know what it is to be lonely. Amen. I know that what it is violence because I was brought up in violence in my life. Amen. Not by my family, but in the streets of New York. And I know what it is to have a hard heart. That's what I had. To the point
point that I said, why am I even existing here, man? Everybody's about themselves and, you know, violence and all these things that went through my neighborhood. People fighting and shooting and stabbing each other. And I've seen all that as a little kid. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is that we all come from different environments. Amen? We all come from different places. But we stand now together, what? In the common ground of who? Of love. Of God coming into my life. Amen? And the experiences that I went through in my life, I can share with others, but also know that if someone's going through that, I could be an intervention into that person's life to say, no, I've been down that road. Amen? I've been down that road. You don't want to go that way. Believe me. I have the scars to prove it. Amen? But God comes in as I study his word, and it changes me. Amen? Not only did I make a commitment to say, Lord, I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Amen? Come into my heart. And everything came into place. But God's word, again, as believers, we may come from different places, but we stand on the same common ground as we share what? The same common grace for God's love for us. Because it's all about grace. Amen. The grace of God. Paul speaks of the spiritual gifts also that he's given us. So all these experiences that I've been through, and some of you got experience that you came from other hardships in your life. Amen? Maybe being abused, uh, uh, things that we go through in life, but we don't hold on to those things because if we hold on to those things, then we're, you know what, then we're, we're, we're destined for hell. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that washes our sins away and cleanses us. And as we continue to renew our minds, amen, Paul speaks about what? The spiritual gift that God is going to give you. And what is those gift that he's given us is to minister, right, for the church. Who's the church? We're the church. That every believer will possess at least one spiritual gift. This is why I was talking about that we come from different places. We have different uh, things that happen in our lives. And this is why the Bible said, never forsake your testimony. That is the greatest weapon that we have. You see? Because your experience and what you went through in life, God is going to use to turn things around. Not only did he turn it around in your life, but that thing is going to turn somebody else's life around. Amen? And when you start reading the word and really start giving your heart to God, then you'll be You'll have a peace and a strength that no matter, as I was saying, no matter what comes around you, whatever surrounds you, you know that God is with you. Amen. Paul speaks about these spiritual gifts that are given to minister for the church, that every believer was possessed, possesses at least one spiritual gift. Now I'm going to read a little bit here. Those that want to follow me, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 13. Then we're going to go down to, to, to 25, 26. All right, and I'm going to read out of the easy-to-read version. Please open up your Bibles or if you have a phone, look at what I'm reading, amen? And it says what? Remember I said that Paul speaks of spiritual gifts, and these gifts are to minister to, uh, for the church, that every believer was to possess at least one spiritual gift. Amen? First Corinthians says, from beginning from verse 4, there are different kinds of what? Spiritual gifts. But they, all, but they are all for the same what? Spirit. Amen? Uh, verse 5, there are different ways to serve, but we serve, what, the same, what, Lord, amen? And, they, and there are different ways that God works, again, where? In people. 
But it is what? The same God who works in all of us to do the very thing. Amen? And, and verse 7. Something from the Spirit can be seen, what? In each person. The Spirit gives to uh, this, the Spirit gives this to each one to do what? Simply, and I'm reading out an easy to read version, to help others. Amen. Amen? Verse 8, the Spirit gives one person the ability to speak with what? With wisdom. Amen? And the same Spirit gives another person the ability to speak with what? With knowledge. Now, how do we speak in wisdom? Where do we get wisdom? But in the Word of God, right? Or when you get your college degree, where do you get wisdom? By studying in the books that you study, right? So it always talks about what? Uh, searching the Scriptures. Amen. Right? And where do we get the knowledge? Through the Lord and through the Word of God. Simple. Am I right? That same Spirit gives us what? Faith. To one person and to another, it gives gifts of what? Of healing. Amen? Verse 10. The Spirit gives to one person the power to do what? Miracles, right? To another, the ability to prophesy, right? And to another, the ability to judge. And what is from the Spirit and what is not. Amen? I want to say that again. To judge what is from the Spirit and what is not. Amen. I want to stop there for one minute because I want to highlight on that. Again, the ability to judge what is from a Spirit and what is not. Amen. And we know that we're spirit beings. So you hang out long enough with somebody, you get to know who they really are. Am I right? Where, the, where their treasures lie. What is in the heart's person and what their faith, it should manifest what, who that person is. Simple, right? I know I'm talking to college degrees out here, <laughs> but think about it, amen. This is why I love the word of God, because it empowers us and it gives us strength that no textbook can ever give you. It tells us about life. It tells us how to live our lives, right? Right? How to receive blessings, how to use our gifts, and the most important thing, how to have a true intimate relationship with God. And knowing the will of God, right? And knowing the will that God has for your life. Amen. Because we're all searching for something. What's the most important thing that we should be searching for is our relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, no matter how much knowledge you got, no matter how much money you got, no matter what you got, amen, it's going to come to an end one day. Amen. But we know when you have a knowledge of who God is and the will of God in your life, you're going to have a great life, a prosperous life, and a successful life, amen, in every sense of that word. When you get married, you meet a person and they have the same, what, mindset because you become as what? One, right? Blessings are going to fall on your marriage. Blessings are going to fall on your children. This is why the Bible says be careful who you associate yourself with. That's why it says you'll be able to discern the spirits. Amen. I know this is deep now. I'm going deep waters. But it's the truth. Again, to judge what is from the spirit and what is not. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak in different kinds of what? Languages. And to another, the ability to interpret those languages. Amen. To interpret the language. Now, my revelation term, we could define that as speaking in, you know, Russian or Spanish, but it's more than that, too. The language that's coming out of that person. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we see it and we try to change people. We can't. All we can do is give them the word of God. They gotta make a decision for themselves. That's why the Bible says, be careful. 
judge. And we're not judging to do to just we're judging and saying, man, this if I don't have to if 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 I didn't mean uh, uh, in other words, what 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 worked for our marriage, I'm gonna talk about marriage for a minute, was that I knew that, that she was a woman of God. That she had God in her life. So we have the same interests. You see? The Bible said, be, don't be unevenly yoked. In other words, judge, be be smart, be wisdom. It's, you know what I'm saying? She's a woman of God. I love God. I know if I don't, if she doesn't love God and, 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 and I'm going to get married and, and I love God, I can't, you know, I can't, I could try to change her and minister to her. Back in the day, she has to make the choice. So I'm going to judge that I have a relationship with her. In other words, and my sisters and brothers out there, I'm going to judge if I'm going to have a relationship with her or not. See, God gives us wisdom and knowledge to understand that. And where do I find that? In the Word of God. But He says again, what? One spirit, the same spirit. Uh, where was I? Okay, no. Okay, let's go to verse 11. One spirit, the same spirit, does all these things. The same spirit decides what to give to each one. Amen? Now let us go down to verse where am I? 12. A person has his own body, right? But it has what? Many parts. Yes, there are many parts, but all those parts are still what? Just one body. Christ is like that too. Verse 13, some of us are Jews, and some of us are not. Some of us are saved, and some of us are free. I mean slaves. Slaves, I'm sorry. I want to say that again because I messed it up. Some of us are Jews, and some of us are not. Some of us are slaves, and some of us are free. But we all were what? Baptized to become one body through one spirit that we all give the one spirit. Amen? Now let us go down to verse 25. Amen. God did this so that our body would not be divided. Amen? God wants dif the different parts to care the same for each other. Again, God wants the different parts to care for the same, uh, the same for each other, right? If one part of the body suffers, then all the parts of the body suffer. When it or if any part is what? Honorable, right? Then all the other parts share in what? Honor, right? All of a, all all of you, verse twenty seven, together are what the body of Christ. Each one is a part of the body. Amen. So what is that saying? Some person said, "Well, we all God's children." Yes, He loves all of us, right? But He gave us His word to have a relationship with Him. Why do we have the Word of God? The Word of God is used in every textbook, everything that you go in life. God's, they, where do you think they get it from? From the Word of God. Amen? Song writers, textbooks, all this stuff, most of them come from the Word of God, the knowledge of the power of the Word of God. People give me books. Before I had ministers come, give me all kinds of books. I said, I thank you for the book and everything. Not to say this is just their insights of what God has done in their life, which is good. Amen. You, it's like a diary. You're leaving what God has done in your life to others that, you know, mine is not a book. Because they even asked me, why don't you write a book with all the stuff you've been through, Pastor Ben? They said, the way you grew up, the way you suffered physically, and how you continue to stand for God. Not that I'm somebody special. Because I know there's a lot of other people out there. Amen. But I said, you know what? My faith should dictate my relationship with God and my love for God. Amen. And by the things that I do. In other words, you put your money where your mouth is at. Amen. Everything that we have, we dedicate it to that. Now, going back to marriage, I want to say that because God has given me that in my heart to say today. I wasn't thinking of it, but, you know, the Holy Spirit works in it. And 
mysterious ways. And I say that to people when as I tell my own daughter, be careful who you socialize with. Be careful what relationships you get into. If you don't have the same thing, and I made it so common and simple, I might not like. I like to maybe fold my towel a certain way, and she folds the towel a different way. <laughs> you see, it's those little things that are important that we bypass them, and that's the thing that we got to realize, that we got to remember. We got to remember what the Word tells us that gives us knowledge, right? To have what? A successful life. A prosperous life. So if I like folding the towel a certain way and she folds the towel the same way, we in harmony, right? Amen. We in one mind and one accord. Amen. And this is why I say the Bible tells us, warns us, don't be, don't be unevenly yoked. And as Christians, that's how we're supposed to be. Why is it so hard for us to do that? Why wow, we got so many people there? I'm going to say the truth. Maybe that's why this church ain't full, because I don't want to speak the truth. Why is it that we have so much competition? We say we don't, but we do. I have no competition against nobody. I'm doing what God called me to do. Amen. I've been walking this walk for 40 years. Amen. I know where I was at. I know where the promised land is at. I know where my destiny is at. See, and that's what God has given to all of us when you have a true intimate relationship with God. Because we think that the things we do in my legacy that I'm going to that, you know what? I know God. And if he comes today, can I say I'm ready? I, with all my heart, I'd say yes. I believe I'm ready. So if he was to come today, you know how we see those movies? You might just see my nice suit standing here, but I won't be in it. I'll be... <laughs> Amen. This is what God promised, but you know the good news is that what he's done for me, he doesn't care for me as much as he doesn't care for you. He cares for all of us the same. Jesus came to die for who? For the sinner. I, and who's a sinner? We were all there. Amen. Not to say that we might not fall into sin, but we have protection. Why? Because the more we empower ourselves with knowledge and truth, we know what to do. The more we understand and we realize that the Word of God is a book of life. It's not just a book. It is a book of truth. It talks about what's happening back then. They're telling us it's happening today. How did they know that? How did they know the prophets that God spoke to, that Moses was on the mountain, and God took them out of slavery and said, Moses, go get, get my people. And then God gives his first ten commandments. And what happened? There was division. Because they went back to their old slavery ways. And they had the word there in hand. To put nothing before but to put him first. And simple lane is to put God first in your life and you'll see how things have changed. I'm not talking about religion. We do these things because we honor God. I honor God. This is a cross to remember. He's no longer there. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father still interceding for me. Amen. Let me get finished. I'm almost finished. And it says this. Hallelujah. Paul is saying, you know the truth. Paul was telling us back then. You know the truth. And if you know, you know the story of Paul, he used to chase Christians. He hated Jesus. He killed Christians. And God turned them around. Amen. And he became the greatest writer of the New Testament that God enlightened him to give us instructions from our ancestors what to do and what not to do. Simple. I'm very simple. Paul's saying, you know the truth now. Now what he's saying to me and you, walk in it. The bottom line is this. Where is the genuine faith, my brothers and sisters? Where's our genuine faith? There will be a genuine work that will back it up. Is that the truth? When you have a genuine faith, you know where my faith is right here. Not only did I look out, but my faith is right here next door. Everything that we have, right? We put it in what? We put God first. 
And when he could put God first, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He gave me my desires. He changed my life. Then my children didn't have to go through what I went through. And then they would have those individuals in their life that were going to encourage them and show them the way, the truth. But then at the end of the day, they have to make a decision for themselves. But see, the more you, see, you plant the seed in someone and you water that seed and you keep watering it. And what does that word mean, watering? Reminding them about the word of God. Pouring into their lives, not only speaking the word into them, but living in yourself and being a testimony to them. Amen. And God said, you put me first and see if I don't give you all the desires of your heart. And you'll have a prosperous life and a great life. Amen. I might have started back in violence. I might have started in a bad way in my life as a young person. But God turned it around. And my kids didn't have to go through what I went through. Because you see, I knew that road. That's what I'm trying to say in layman's terms. I knew that road. I said, I'm not going to allow my children to go down that road. And remember that, you know, uh, uh, God entrusted me with them. And my responsibility is to bring them up in the ways of the Lord. As the Bible says, teach them. Don't just speak it. Show it out of your life. Teach them. Again, one more time, Paul said, you know the truth now, my sisters and brothers, walk in it. The bottom line is that where there is genuine faith, there will be a genuine work, as I was saying here. I want to take all these passages, my brothers and sisters, that I read today for you and share with you that one and one of all, that we are one and one of all. Amen? Amen. I want to see that believing in what the Lord is saying to us today. Amen. And I hope that what I've said today has empowered you because I always pray about what I'm going to share. I just don't pick up a book and say, I'm gonna, no, I say, Lord, what do you want me to say? What need to be said? Because we there's so much confusion, so many things in the world. We're all searching for something. We don't have to search anymore. That's what I tell people. What are you searching for? I found. I found it, Lord. Is having a relationship with God, a true intimate relationship with God. And putting God first in everything that you do. We got so many testimonies and witnesses back from the Bible, from the Torah, from everything that was already said. And we got the greatest book, which is the book of life. This is the book that we need to study. And this not only study it, but we need to have faith in it and believe in it. And that what draws us closer to God. And we find out who God is and what his will is for our lives. Amen. Because he's all about protecting us and loving us. Amen. Amen. So I want to end there. Amen. And I just want to say that God loves you most of all. And again, I come for one reason, to encourage and to build up. Me and Natasha, we just keep reaching our hands to everybody. Say, we're here. We want to help those that want to come. We're here. Amen. We're available. We have the studio next door. And, and, and I thank God for yesterday. We were able to, to share, right? And, and, and not only as we were sharing, they brought us even closer. Amen. Because we realize what's the most important things in our lives. We're to mature and become attentive, the Bible says, to the Word of God, right? And to apply that Word into our life. And say, thank you, Lord, for keeping us. Thank you for sustaining us. And at the end of the day, we thank you that no matter what, we stand in and continue to put you first in everything that we do. And as you send us out here, Father, Lord, and we're coming to do that with God, that you send us to do, to share the love and what you've done in our lives and be a witness and a testimony. So I pray for everyone out there. Again, I thank God for this opportunity to be here today, to be able to share this with you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that I stirred your spirit and tune your ears because I know that God's word never goes void. It accomplishes what it set out to do. And I pray that it, I enlighten you today as I remind myself with the word of God and what I need to do in my life and to be able to share with you. And I say this all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.